Guys, we caught you up on UT's five point win earlier in the show. Now it's time to take a look at tonight's high school football action. We saw about a dozen games involving local teams. We'll start with Rouse and Liberty Hill, who played each other in the third round last year, and tonight was their third round rematch. And how's this for a storyline? Panthers running back Joe Pitchford actually played at Rouse last season. The sophomore put Liberty Hill in scoring position early. They punch it in a few plays later. Now the Raiders, on the other hand, did most of their damage through the air. Mason Shore to Jalen Bacara, Rouse led by the led at the break, but Liberty Hill turned into Liberty Mountain in the second half. Panthers win this one 56 to 33. Liberty Mountain will play the winner of this game. Marble Falls taking on Alamo Heights. It's the Mustangs versus the Mules. I know who I'd bet on in that horse race. Mustangs defender David Rogers and Xavier Lopez teamed up for a sack on fourth down. Now that's the good for the local guys. Here's the bad. Alamo Heights scored the only points of the first half. It was seven zip at the break. Alamo Heights hit a field goal as time expired, and they win and end Marble Falls' season. Final score in this one, 10 to seven. To the scoreboard for the first time tonight, Westlake pitched its fourth shutout of the season. They beat PSJA 56 to nothing, and Vandegrift beat Vela 38-14. The Shafts and Vipers play each other next Saturday, and guys, catch this. They are playing inside of DKR Texas Memorial Stadium. You know we'll be there. Lake Travis took on Laredo United South, and Derek Johnson had himself a day. Three rushing scores in this one. Now, he's been doing it all season long, so really there is no need to stop now. This run, beautiful. One juke made two defenders fall all over each other, then a stiff arm that you know the defender's going to be having nightmares about. The Cavs channel their inner Freddy Krueger and win this one 35 to 19. Lake Travis gets the winner of Bowie versus Brennan in the fourth round. Let's start with the local guys. Connor Kenyon hung in strong in the pocket, took a hit and delivered a shot up there to Noah Vasquez. That's a 59 yard touchdown, about 13 fantasy points if you're playing six A high school fantasy football and who isn't? The Bulldogs held a seven point lead when Armando Acevedo went sky high to make a play. Bowie's fantastic season will come to an end. Brennan wins this one 59 to 36. Back to the scoreboard, Cedar Park season comes to a close. They failed a Peto this afternoon, 65-14. And Fredericksburg, the Billies move on. They beat Pleasanton 28-20. to Now, even though this is not a full 30-minute Friday football fever, we do have a band of the week, so get those ears ready for a very quick listen to the band from Lago Vista. <laughs> All right, it was short, but the band, uh, the band was short, but this run very long. On the option play, Logan Parsons only had one option, and that was to go 81 yards to the end zone. That run gave the Vikings a five-point lead in the second. They go on to win 33 to 29. Lago is back in the fourth round for the second straight season. Wimberley lined up against the Quero Gobblers on the day after Thanksgiving. Surely that's a good sign, right? Cash McCollum to Ryan Shaw, who was stuffing one in the end zone. That score had a mac and cheese in on the sideline. The Texans held a lead until Quero mashed its way across the goal line. Gobblers win 36 to 26. And one or two final notes here. San Marcos Academy, the private school, beat Veritas Academy 56-33. San Marcos playing for a state championship next week. And tomorrow, LBJ plays Bernie at noon in San Antonio. Of course, we will have highlights right here on KVU. Back with a final look at your forecast.